Well, happy Sunday. Praise the Lord, each and every one of you all. Good morning, good afternoon, good um, evening, wherever you are, because you all know Apex is everywhere. Or you may be watching this at a later time versus right now live um, with us on this Sunday. Nevertheless, I bring you greetings here. I am Minister Dominique King, and I'm so honored, humbled, and grateful for the opportunity to stand before you on this morning. Listen, it's apex everywhere. We are, I'm standing in the gap today for our pastor, Pastor Larry. And so we're praying for him as he recovers. And we know that when he gets back, that boy is going to preach. So will you all let him know that you love him, that you're praying for him, and that you're thinking about him right now? Put it in the comments right now. Hey, we're praying for you, Pastor. I love you, Pastor. That's right, it's Valentine's Day weekend, right? So let's show love, right? Let's show love. As a matter of fact, will you tell somebody on your timeline, as you see somebody's name pop up, you may not even know them. I want you to tell them that you love them. Say, I love you. Just actually at them. At somebody right now and tell them that you love them because that's what we're called to do. And, and that's what we're going to talk about on today. I promise I'm not going to be before you long. It's Super Bowl and Valentine's Day weekend and I know you got a boo and you got something to do. So I am not going to be before you too, too long, but I do believe that there is a word from the Lord as it relates to love on today. I like to live a life intentional, right? Um, I try to be very intentional about the way I live and the way I think. And so um, it's been very helpful Right? Especially as we get deeper into the word of God. And so I believe that God has given us these instructions for a reason so that we can truly experience the abundance of life, the abundance of living and ultimately to get to heaven. Yeah, I'm not doing all of this stuff down here just to be doing something. No, I have a goal and heaven is the goal. And um, the thing about it is in order to get to heaven, we got to get this love thing right. Amen. We got to get this love thing right. And so that's what we wanted to talk about on today on this Valentine's Day weekend. So will you do me a favor? Will you share this broadcast? Let everybody know that they need to get in here right now because we are talking about love. And who better to give us the greatest example of love than that of Jesus Christ? Let's jump into the text, John 13. Turn with me, if you will, to John 13. You may can pull it up on the app on your phone. John 13, it's a familiar verse. You know it, but I want to make sure sure that we know it. Amen. Amen. So for the um, sake of this message, I'm only going to read two verses. And so if you will let me know that you got it, put it in the comments. Say, I got it. Amen. John 13, beginning at verse 34. And the word of the Lord says, so now I am giving you a new commandment that you would love each other. Yeah, love each other just as I have loved you. You are to love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you and we honor you. And we ask right now that you will just meet us in this space, God, Lord, and give us a word that comes directly from you. Lord, hide me. Lord, we don't want to hear from me. We want to hear from you. Speak, Lord. We are listening. For if you do not speak, nothing will be said. In Jesus' name, I pray. A Man, it's Valentine's Day weekend, and I, I I love Valentine's Day, especially considering that I'm in love. <laughs> I love love. I am a lover, if nothing else, and I absolutely love my husband. I love him. Um, we have been married now for almost three years, which means this is our fourth Valentine's Day that we're actually going to spend together, so I'm excited about it. And so, yeah, I love my husband. It's not a secret. I post him all over my social media. Um, I take him with me almost everywhere that I go if he can come or if he wants to come. Sometimes he does not want to push my card at Sam's Club. So y'all pray for him. And nevertheless, but because I love him, I just like for him to be with me. Now, I'm not insecure. I don't think he's doing nothing or nothing like that. I just like him. I really do. He's a great friend. He he He's a companion. He fine and he mine. Okay. So yes, I love to tell the world about him especially so far 
I mean, so far, like I said, we just three years in, you know, I'm gonna be realistic. But so far, you know, his love for me has exceeded my expectations as relates to for from a husband. I mean, this man takes care of me. He provides for me. His love has healed me in places that I didn't even know were broken. His love frees me. His love makes me happy. I mean, his love, I mean, this man loves me, y'all. When I got crust in my eyes, stank on my breath, ash on my ankles. Now, now I'm talking about this man love me. Now, let's be clear. Sometimes I do want to throw him out the window. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I do. I do. I want to throw him out the window, especially when he eats my snacks. Y'all know Precious lives inside of me. So now all of a sudden you eat the little nutty buddy ice creams. Like I didn't even know. I ain't never seen you have this. But nevertheless, you know what? I love him. So I let it slide, you know, because sharing is caring. And, and I love him. So I try to show it and I try to express it. And I know people. People say you talk about your husband all the time. You're always posting him. And I have no shame in that because he mine. He belongs to me and I belong to him. When you see me, you see him. And when you see him, you see me because that's how our love is set up. It is. It's just how our love is set up. And I think that it inspires people to love and be excited about love. We ain't goals, but we can be an example of what love looks like. And as I was reading this text, <laughs> as I was reading this text, it hit me. It hit me, you guys, and the same way that I go hard for my husband, the same way that you go hard for your boo on social media or, or, or just however you go hard for them, the same way that you show love and you openly praise and celebrate your favorite team. I know a lot of people are excited about the Super Bowl or, or maybe you not because your team didn't make it, but the same way that you love the things around you, the same way that everybody knows that you love the things around you is the same way that people should see the love that you have for Jesus as you walk. They should see the love that you exude from Jesus in your walk. When they see you, they should see him. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you see me, I don't want you to just see me. I don't want you to see Dominique and I really don't want you to see Marvin. But what I want you to see is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, when you see me, I want you to see him. And so family, for a very brief moment, now, unless Holy Spirit just, con con I mean, just completely takes over and makes it a little bit longer. For a brief moment, I want to challenge our hearts with this consideration. Exhibiting a love that lifts the world. A love that lifts the the world because you see here's the thing love is not an option that's my first point love is not an option family it's, it's right here in the text you see love is actually an essential character trait that we as believers should possess yeah because you see the lord loved us unconditionally we are expected as believers to love one another unconditionally. Yeah, I know this is a little tight. Do not log me off because I promise this is going to be good and it's going to be helpful. And I know that this sounds good, but it's difficult, but it is a commandment. Yeah, that, that Jesus gave before he left to go to be with the father. And I know you're probably thinking, Minister Dom, that's easy to preach but hard to live but the thing is it's not easy to preach because i'm trying my hardest to live it i'm i'm am i the only one am i preaching to myself today yeah but i believe that the reason that we have difficulties in loving is because we have associated love with our feelings yeah with our feelings but the thing is love is infinitely more than a good feeling. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not about just how you feel. 
Yeah. And I know I'm telling you, I promise you, somebody is pulling me in the spirit right now. And you're saying that, that, that this, that that's too hard. And I'm trying to let you know that as difficult as it is to listen to this type of preaching, I, it's difficult to preach it because when you truly study this text and consider the circumstances around Jesus at the time of him sharing this, we have to realize that it was probably difficult difficult for Jesus too. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably difficult for Jesus too, but thankfully for us, hallelujah. Thankfully for us, Jesus didn't get caught up in his feelings. No, he, he, he didn't get caught up in his feelings and how he felt because could you imagine, could you imagine how tired Jesus was? I mean, he had done a lot of work in those three years and during his ministry. He had done a lot of work. I don't really think that he stopped. Um, and, 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 and so I'm sure he was tired. But, but, but can you imagine how annoyed Jesus was? Can you imagine how heartbroken Jesus was? Yet he still loved. He still loved. He still loved people around him that maybe didn't grow up like him and didn't act like he probably thought that they should act. He he didn't grow up. He, he wasn't surrounded by people that maybe always dressed appropriately. He, he didn't surround himself all the time with people that said the right things. No, no, he still loved him though. Yeah, yeah, Christ shows us how to have a sacrificial love. This is, this is what he's teaching those that are around him. And, and he says to love one another, just as I have loved you. Yeah. I mean, he really could have said, just as I have shown you. Cause God, Jesus showed love in the beginning of this chapter, Jesus is washing the disciples feet. And, and this was a clear example of Jesus's humble self sacrificing love for them. Yeah. Jesus made himself to be a sacrifice for mankind. Yeah. Which is why he act the way he did, the way he loved the way he did. He sacrificed his life by dying on the cross for our sins. But before that, he also gave his whole life here on earth to serve man. Yeah, to serve man. The meaning of the word love or agape, which is used here in verse 34, is a self sacrificing love and giving of oneself. Yeah. Jesus gave himself for us. He sacrificed all glory and honor to die on a cross like he was a criminal, like he had killed somebody and he did nothing but try to save. He even died for people that hate his name and despise him. And I know you say it's easy to love yourself. It's even easy to love the people that love you and the people that are around you and the people that you choose. But how do you do when you love someone that is annoying or a pest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is your love constantly sacrificing? Do you sacrifice your time to Christ, to his church? When was the last time that you called or text your pastors and asked, how can I serve? I want to serve more. Yeah. When was the last time you didn't say no when they came up to your window at the red light and asked you for your loose change? You got it, but did you give it? No, because in your mind, in your feelings, you're saying that they should be doing something better with their life. They need to go find a way the same way that you found a way to be able to have the loose change or the extra dollars. No, 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 no. That was in your feeling. But but my question is, you should be willing to sacrifice your time, your life and your giving because God, Jesus sacrificed his time, his life and his giving for you. Yeah. Yeah, love isn't just giving when others are giving. It's giving when others are not giving. Mm -hmm. It's hard, I know. Yeah. Yeah, the text says you must be known by your Christ-like love for others. Even if that means loving them and leaving them. 
Yeah, some people are going to show you that they don't love you. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe Holy Spirit reveals to you that they don't love you like you love them. Yeah. But, but, but the truth of the matter is, love is required. You, you are commanded to love. And I know that you're mad at them because they betrayed you and, and you done heard what they've said in the streets and how they tried to discredit your name and how they've shared confidential information about you and your life and, and, and they betrayed you like Judas betrayed Jesus. But, but, but here's the thing. When Jesus shares that, that he knows that someone will betray him, I want you to read the entire chapter 13. I'm not going to read all of it for you, but when he shares that he knows that someone betrayed him, and will betray him and deny him. He didn't turn over chairs and tables. He didn't cuss nobody out. He didn't throw the wine glasses or the basins that were full of water after he had finished done doing the feet washing. No, no, he, he, he basically simply said, you can go. Yeah, verse 21, it said, when Jesus had said this, he was troubled in his spirit and testified, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Yeah. One of you will betray me. Family, there are going to be times and people that you will encounter, that you love, that you have to love through the hurt. You're going to have to love them through the betrayal. You're going to have to love them through the abandonment. You're going to have to love them through the neglect. And this is the thing. We don't have to talk about it. Yeah, we don't necessarily have to talk about it. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to explain why you've been doing and acting the way you're acting. Everybody want to talk about having closure, but, but, but I'm good. I'm good on closure. Yeah, you can just go ahead and do what it is that you're going to do. And I'm still going to be over here loving like Jesus. Yeah, because in verse 30, he says, after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately left. Judas left once he got called out. Jesus didn't have to argue with him. He didn't have to talk about him. He didn't have to say nothing. They didn't have to fight. No, he left. Jesus told him to go. Go ahead and do what it is that you have to do. Because guess what? The good news is, family, God is still going to get the glory. Yeah. Yeah. God still got the glory after Jesus was betrayed. God still got the glory after Jesus was denied. God still got the glory after Jesus was killed. God still is going to get the glory after the disciples who would sit next to him and be so full of hate, betrayal, just ungratefulness. And then he just left. He, he, he didn't ask. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say, no, it's not true. He left. And the thing you have to ask people when they do, when you do kind of call them out on their stuff and they be so quick to go, you, you, you should really wonder why, why is it that they so quick to go and betray me? Why, why, why do they feel like that they got to go do this so fast? Why, well, what, what is it? But I believe that a lot of times family, it's just a setup. Yeah, just like for Jesus, this setup was for his come up. Yeah, but you just got to hold your posture. You have to hold your posture, family. And that posture is love. Yeah, yeah, that posture is love because you see love, love is patient. Love is patient. First Corinthians 13 tells us love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. Ooh. It's not self-seeking. It ain't about you. It's not easily angered. I know they pissed you off. But love isn't easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes, always perseveres. Family, love never fails. Yeah, yeah. Love never fails, family. 
Love is a thing that's going to bring and, and, and merge these, these generational gaps and this brokenness in your family and this brokenness in your heart and in your mind. I just need you to realize that the love of Jesus will heal you. It will lift you. It takes the love of Jesus to lift the world. Yeah. And the reality is I got to get my stuff together. I got to keep my stuff together. I have to make sure that I'm doing what it is that God has called me to do. Because what I don't want to do is have all of these things, have all of these degrees, have businesses, have money, have generational wealth and doing all of these things, but end up in hell because I couldn't play follow the leader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because 1 Corinthians 13 and 2, it tells us I, 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 if I have the gift of prophecy and, and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. I'm nothing. I can prophesy, y'all. You, we, we can do community service, have multiple degrees, a house on the hill, a boat on the lake with a billion-dollar evaluated company. But because I, I've just, I've been so faithful, and I've trusted God, and 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 I've just had faith the size of a mustard seed, and and I paid my tithes, and and I showed up for online Bible study and Sunday worship on Sunday, and I've done all these things. But here's the thing: you can do all of those things, but if you do not know how to love, you are nothing. And family, I I, I, I don't want to waste my time here. I, I don't want to be nothing. I, I, I want to receive the reward. So that means that I have to do more than just love the people around me. Yeah. Yeah. I have to do more than just love my family, my friends, and my pastors. Yeah. Sometimes you got to to, to, to to still love the questionable pastor. I know that's not the, the, the sermon for the day, but you got to love. You see, the wounds of humanity are not going to heal if everyone limits their sense of responsibility to love just to their friends and to their family. Your responsibility to love goes deeper than just your friends and your family. There are people that need Jesus. There are people that you encounter that need Jesus. There are people that need the Jesus in you, not the you in Jesus holding a bitter heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they need to see your love. That's how they're going to know that you're truly a Christian. That's how they know that you're truly saved. Jesus said, I'm willing to die because it's not about me. It's about you and the you that you will encounter. We have to love people, y'all. And, and to be honest, we got to start with ourselves. It, it starts with me first. That's right. Because how can you love me if you don't know how to love you? That's the problem. The, the thing is, the only way we're going to find out how we how to love ourselves is to love ourselves through Christ. Yeah. And that means taking better care of ourselves and taking care of our health. Love is taking care of yourself. And I know me, too. I got to do better. I'll be honest. It, do I got my I got my support group in here? Hi, my name is Dominique. And sometimes I eat too much and I'm a little lazy. Yeah, but I believe that after this TED talk about love, that, that y'all going to pray for me and we're going we gonna to lose some spirits. Amen. Because I got work to do and, and we got work to do. And so in order for us to do the work, we have to work on ourselves. And so as we work on ourselves, we cannot just not think about the other people that are around us, the, the people that we encounter, the community, the brothers and the sisters, they experiencing homelessness. Because if, if I could and when I can, I, I want to build a, a homeless shelter as big as the Mercedes Benz dome to get some of the homeless people off the street because whenever I pass them I'm always mad at myself like Lord why am I not a billionaire I, I just want to help I want to help fix everything I just want to help people I just want to love like Jesus did and, and it hit me I realized that, that, that Jesus didn't meet everybody during his time no, Jesus didn't meet everybody, but everybody that heard about him and they felt like they had encountered him. Why? Because as disciples, when you tell the story of Jesus Christ, it shouldn't just be with your words. No, no, it shouldn't just be with your words. It should be with your action. Yeah, it should be with your action. Jesus said they will know you by your love. Not just by your name. 
not just by your affiliation and your associations. No, they will know you by your love. Because my second point, love is a model. Yeah. Love is not an option. And love is a model. You see, family, the more, the more we, we open ourselves up to God and his love for us and, and we experience his love and, and the more we express that love, whew, the more love we have to share. Yeah, you see, love is a gift, family. Love is a gift that is given to us. Jesus modeled love so that it could be packaged in what we call Christianity so that we could receive it and duplicate it. Yeah. And guess what, family? Here is the good news. Not, not only does he love us, not only did he create, come to be an example and a model, he, he, he loved us so much he went and paid for it. Yeah, he went and paid for my sins. He, he, he loved me through my sins and he hadn't even met me yet. I wasn't even in existence yet. But then again, maybe because he was God and, you know, he had been here and done this already. Maybe he did know me. And so, so, so he already had me and my sins and my transgressions in mind when he, when he decided to continue to love. And, and, and but, but with my little mind, with what, what my little bitty mind can conceive to me, he did this for us, uh, for a perfect stranger. For someone who would betray him, because I, I, I haven't always just honored him with my life. No. Yeah. There have been times of denial. Yeah. And all he wants to do is love us. Yeah. Yeah, denying and keeping it a secret. And, and not expressing my love and, and, and not showcasing my love so that God can get the glory. And family, do not let your love die because you don't want to express it. Yeah. How do I know that you love me if you don't show me? Mm -hmm. Jesus showed us that he loved us by his expression, by sacrificing his life. Now, that doesn't mean that I won't love you. No, I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, I I'm just trying to figure it out. Are you kind? I are you giving? Because I'm not sure. Are you forgiving? Are you selfless? Because I haven't really seen it. And, and family, as believers, we should be able to see it. People should know that they love you. You know, I, my love, I ain't gonna lie, I'm such a lover. My love, my love can get me in trouble sometimes because I'm one of those love people that don't know how to stop. Yeah, I don't know how to stop loving people. I just love them all the time. I just put them in a little category. Nevertheless, Jesus didn't say to stop loving them. No, he he just said depart from me. Hmm. <laughs> Because as the, 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 the late prophetess Tina Marie said, you know, you can love them and leave them. But the first thing you got to do is love them. You have to love them even when it hurts, even when they betrayed you, even when they took advantage of you, even when they manipulated you. You see, our love family has to be so mature. Yeah, we, we, we have to love when it's not appreciated. That's right. We have to love when we're betrayed. We, we have to love when we're denied. We have to love when we're angry. We have to love when our feelings are hurt. We have to love when we feel looked over. We have to love when we feel cast out. We have to love when we feel like we're the black sheep of the family. We have to love regardless of if you're in another ethnic group or if you intimately love differently than me. My assignment while I am here is to love. Love is not broad. It is specific. Yeah. And you see, family, when we love like Jesus, we look like Jesus. Yeah, I look like Jesus because I love like Jesus. I don't just love you because I want to love you. Be clear. Huh. Let's just be honest. I, I don't just love you because I want to. No, no, I, I haven't always been saved or save saved as someone um, said about me before, whatever that means. But nevertheless, we love because we are of God. That's why we love. We love because we've made a conscious decision to live a life pleasing to God. And this was a command. This was the command. So now I'm not talking about how, how you just have to be disciplined. Yes, it does take discipline to just love. But it takes that. But, but we have to love by the spirit. 
Yeah, we have to love by the spirit because love is healing. Yeah, there's some people that are broken right now that will be healed by your love. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know about you, but love makes me feel better. Yeah, love heals our differences. Yeah, when my husband and I, when we have our moments, our small moments, um, the love keeps us at the table or, or in the room or in the house because the love becomes overpowering. Yeah, because we focus and been so intentional about love and ushering in the love of God and making sure that we know that each other loves each other. So I know that's not, you didn't say that in love. So I'm going to let you try again. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, we've made love a feeling and it's not a feeling. It's an action. Yeah. So even though I feel like I'm mad at you right now, your actions have not told me that you don't love me. But I know that we romanticize love into a grand gesture when love is just an example. Yeah. And I hope I don't get in trouble for this. And I pray that if some of my seminary friends and scholars are on here, let's debate this in Rita Rollins. But I believe, I believe that Jesus didn't just die because he loved us. No, I believe that Jesus died because he loved himself. Because he loved himself and love is honest. And love knows what love is. And Jesus knew that, knew who he was. And, and, and so he refused to tell the Romans or the religious leaders in Israel anything differently. And so he died so that we could tell the same truth and, and that God will get the glory forever. Regardless of if they lie, regardless of if they accuse, regardless of what they do, I still love. Yeah. You see, genuine, deep-seated, constant, and self-sacrificing love for one another is, dis is a distinguished trait of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to give us access to God's grace. Yeah. How you love gives you access to God's grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want God to be gracious to me. So if he just wants me to love, yeah, love is an overflow of what God has done in our heart. This is a distinguishable mark of Christians. People should know you by your walking, your talking, your actions. People know that you are a follower of Jesus and, and his true love because you display it. Yeah, that way you will be known. For your Christ-like love of others. So family, today as I close, I pray that you find yourself so wrapped up in God's love for you. That you refuse to deny it. That you refuse to betray it. That you show it, express it, talk about it, share it, be it. Yeah, I'm going to be love. Will you write that in the comments right now? I'm going to be love. Yeah, I'm going to be more intentional about being love, being love, not just saying I love you, being love. And don't think that just because you are out by yourself that no one knows if you're showing or being love. Yeah, I know you You only like to really talk about Jesus on Sundays or Wednesday nights if you have Bible study or Thursday morning for prayer call um, or whatever time your church services are. But your expression of love has nothing to do with your piety, but everything to do with your purpose. It's not about you. I don't need you to just, I'm not telling you to just go out here and love just to be like, oh, love, I'm Christian, I love Jesus. No, love, because it was a commandment and Jesus has been an example and now you and we are to be an example. Because this is my last my last um, point and then I'm gone for real so we can go get ready for Super Bowl. Love is evident. Yeah. Your love is evident, family. Yeah. Verse 35, it says, by this, they will know you by your love. They will know that you are my disciples by your love. The world will know. The world will be lifted by your love. 
It's one thing to say it, and it's another thing to prove it. You shouldn't have to wonder about it. The people that are around you should not have to wonder if you love Jesus. Yeah, it, it's Super Bowl Sunday and, and all up and down our timelines during football season. I read all these posts about a person's team and how they love their team. They go hard for their team and everything that they love, they just always posting it. But do you love Jesus? Yeah. yeah. And Jesus is just saying, will you boast about me? Will you celebrate me? Will you share my love with the world? Will you make my love great again? Yeah. Yeah, will you write that in the comments? Yeah, my life's living to make Jesus' love great again. Make Jesus' love great again. That's what I want you to write. Make Jesus' love great again. Yeah, yeah. It's all over the Gospels. We learn and we read scripture about Jesus' compassion. His compassion on the people around him. He was always showing compassion to sinners. He knew that people needed a savior. And there was no possible way to show compassion the way that Christ was able to show compassion. And I'm not saying that, that you are supposed to do it exactly the way Christ did it, the way Jesus showed. And you're not supposed to save the entire world. Um, my father in love, he has this quote that he says all the time. I may, not, I may get it wrong just a little bit, but he says, I am only one. What I can do, I ought to do. What I ought to do, I should do. Family, you should love. Yeah. You should love. I know it's hard. They get on your nerves. But God wants you to love so that others can love like you and they can love like Jesus. Yeah. Now I'm not Jesus. And, and, and listen, he's still working on me, but as he's working on me, I'll do my part because love heals, love lifts. And I don't know about you, but love has truly lifted me. And as it lifts you, you will lift others and others. And as others are lifted, they will lift others and it will become contagious. It will just be this contagious effect of love. Yo, think about it. What if love was just contagious? What if love was as contagious as COVID? <laughs> I'm so sick of COVID, but I mean, it's here. We just got to deal with it. But and, and the thing about it is all you got to do is get close to the wrong person. It will jump on you. And I pray that the compassion of Jesus jumps on you. Yeah. Yeah. I pray that the compassion of Jesus jumps on you because compassion is the love that touches people. We must be filled with compassion. True Christ-like love touches others. So I pray this week that you, that you ask yourself, what, how, how is my living impacting others? Yeah. How is, how is my living impacting others? others when when people see me do they see him or do they see me yeah will you make an intentional effort to live a when they see me they see him life yeah your love for others must be like jesus to be known as christ's disciple we must love as christ has love not just as you love yourself, but as Christ loved you. Because sometimes we don't love ourselves, right? So I have to love myself through the love of Christ. I have to love you through the love of Christ because I may not get it right. But if I'm intentional about it, I can change the world. And family, your love is going to be your strongest argument for your faith in Christ. You must be known by your Christ-like love for others. Because you see, family, love is going to lift the world. So, three things. Love is not an option. Love is a model. And love is evident. It's not optional. It's not optional. You don't have a choice. 
If you're a believer and you expect to get into heaven, I need you to deal with your love and how you express it and how you show it and how you're patient and how you're kind and how you're forgiving and how you may ignore some stuff. I know. And you might have to leave them. Yeah, you might have to walk away from people that don't love you the way that you love them or the way that Christ loves them. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that you change your posture. It doesn't mean that you become uh, full of hate and, and all of that. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that the world needs love. And I believe that you are the one to give it. Amen. 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 Listen, I don't know how long I've been up here, um, but I pray I still got the church. Uh that that you know is that stay with me and that's okay with being challenged about love amen you're listening to this right now and you're you you've been like man i gotta do better i gotta do better i want to love better i want to love like jesus but before i love like jesus i want to get to know jesus a little bit more and i want to ask jesus to come into my heart and save me and all you need to do is just pray a simple prayer lord i am a sinner I have fallen short of your glory. I have fallen short of the things that you want me to do. Come into my heart and save me. Yes, save me. And as I surrender to you, Lord, I know that I am saved. And so if you pray the prayer and you just confess of your sins and you've repented of your sins and you've made a declaration and a conscious decision to do things differently, to follow Jesus, welcome to the body of Christ. You are saved. And so we want to connect with you. And so we I want you to drop a little note um, down. Hey, connect with me. We'll make sure that you connect, that we get someone connected to you. Or you can drop a text. Say, hey, I want to join this ministry. I want to partner up with this ministry. I want to grow in the love of Christ with this ministry. Hey, just text partner to the number that you see right there on the screen. Maybe you're not ready to join us and be a fully committed partner of Apex Everywhere. No, no worries. We like to have friends. We like to have friends and we like to invite our friends to stuff we want to keep our friends up to date about what it is that we have going on so will you text friends to the number below because we want to connect with you as well and so i pray that you were blessed on today i pray that you were challenged i pray that you think about love a little bit differently you think that you i pray that you think about love a little bit more intentionally so that christ will be seen when people see you amen Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we love you. Lord, thank you for this moment and this word and this challenge for us, God. Lord, we just ask right now that you would just give us what it is that we need to actually walk out what we have heard from you. Lord, we want to walk out love. We want to be an example of love to the kingdom. So we just ask right now, Lord, that you would just allow this, this message to penetrate our hearts and change and challenge us, God. Lord, I, I pray for the believer that is listening to this, that is dealing with an issue of the heart, that is dealing with love and not knowing how to show love and express love and be loved. God, Lord, I pray that you would just give them exactly what they need. Show them you. And Lord, as you continue to show them you and as you continue to fill them with your love, that your love will just rush out of them like a raging river. And so we ask right now that you would just be a raging river of love in us right now. Heal us, protect us, and keep us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, God bless you family. Thank you all so much. I, I hope I wasn't too long, but you know, Holy Spirit just speaks and I just want to listen and be obedient. And as I am obedient, um, I pray that that this, this word has resonated with your heart and with your spirit. Listen, one quick thing before we get out of here. We are a giving church. We are a giving church and I pray that you will sow a seed on today. Um, whatever the seed is, we don't have like a number, but all of the information is right here on the screen and you will also see another slide right after this that will let you know how you can sow a seed and how you can give listen i hope that you have an amazing day i pray that you have an amazing holiday um valentine's day and i pray that you enjoy the super bowl today listen smile do something to make you laugh just 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 be happy 
on today. Be happy because you know that you are loved. If you're not loved by nobody else, you're loved by Jesus and you're loved by me. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you all. I will see you guys next time. But until then, have a great one. You know how we do it here at Apex in and on purpose. God bless you. Amen.